a good texture is either going to make or break your scene. And if you've tried to learn how to do it right, you might have stumbled across a few more or less helpful videos that go over a few basic techniques or even some forbidden tips and secrets that are obviously neither forbidden nor a secret. My video is no different because I'm going to cover the four very basic and not so secret steps that I use to get perfect materials every time. Step one, mix at least two different textures together to create a new one. This is not only going to make your texture more interesting, it also helps to hide repetition and can even help you get away with a low resolution texture. So let's get rid of the material and start from scratch. Add a new material and with the Note Wrangler add-on activated, hit Command T to add a new image texture node. Select the texture that serves as the base layer. In my experience, using an even texture that has little to no grunge or damage works pretty well. Since I don't want to unwrap my model, I'm going to set the texture coordinates to generated and the projection to box. This is essentially unwrapping using cube projection, but on the shader level. To control the overall scale, I like to plug a single value node into the scale input. To mix in the second texture, I add a mix color node, load in my image texture, and add the same mapping setup. The factor slider lets you mix between texture 1 and 2. But this looks really boring, as it simply controls the opacity of the second layer. A much better technique is to use an image texture as a mask to control the blending. Simply feed the texture through a color ramp and plug the result into the factor input. But sometimes it's better to use one of the other blending modes. While Mix simply blends in one texture over the other, the other blending modes use mathematical operations. To put it simply, Multiply makes the white parts disappear, Screen the black parts and Overlay or Soft Light the grey parts. Adjusting the brightness or contrast of the image lets you control the effect. In our example here, I'm using Overlay and an RGB Curves node to control the brightness and contrast. Quick tip, layering textures can make your shader editor really messy really fast. To stay on top of things, select your nodes and hit Command J to organize them into these frames. This makes it easier to move them all at once and keep track of how you set up your shader. As you can see, you can blend together more than just two textures. Actually, I'd recommend using at least three different textures. Also think about what textures actually make sense for your model. At this stage, looking at reference photos is key. The next step is one of my favorite techniques and that is making your material smart. When you look at objects in the real world, their texture adapts to their shape or geometry. Edges usually get either brighter or darker and more recessed areas collect grime and dirt over the years. Making your shader aware of the geometry of your mesh is surprisingly easy. To mix in the color difference, I'll add a mix color node. The mix factor shall mask only specific areas of the mesh. For that, I'll use an ambient occlusion node. By default, it detects the more recessed areas and makes them darker. But if you check inside and control the distance, you can mask only the edges. Plugging a grunge or scratch texture into the distance adds quite a lot of realism. And by adding a math node set to divide, you can easily control the thickness of the effect. Adding a color ramp or a map range node lets you dial in the effect even more. If you don't want to just add in a solid color, you can use the original texture and brighten it up using an RGB curves node. This lets you dial in the effect even more and produces way more realistic results. You can also multiply in a normal ambient occlusion node to make your mesh look a bit more three-dimensional and less hand-modeled. Just make sure that you set the mix factor to one. A great way to add even more realism is to use decals. Applying leakage and grunge only in areas where it makes sense goes a long way. In this case, I'm using simple image planes and turned off the ray visibility for shadows. Step three is also very simple, but super effective. And that is to use and tweak the roughness, metal and normal values of the principal BSDF shader. Plugging the textures into the roughness slot and tweaking it with a color ramp is something you see in almost every tutorial, but it can really make a difference. Also feeding your textures through a bump node and using it to control the normal input is key to creating photoreal materials. But please don't simply adjust the strength of the effect. Take one or two seconds and think about the distance value. Because the standard setting of one means a distance of one meter. And that, to my American friends, is quite a lot. A distance of one or two centimeters is usually more than enough. 
so a value of 0.01 or 2 is much more appropriate. The grungier and dirtier your texture is, the higher the value should be. So after following these three steps, you've come up with a smart and believable texture. But all of this is worth absolutely nothing if you fail to do this one last but unavoidable step. And that is integrating your material into the environment. If your model is in a forest, there will be moss on it. If it's in the desert, it will be covered in sand. No matter where something is, it will always take on the colors of its environment. Luckily, this is also a very simple thing to do. Add in a mixed color node and use the color picker to sample the colors of the surrounding area. If you hold down the Alt key, it will average out the sample colors so you can get a more accurate representation of the environment. As a mix factor, you can either use a noise texture or, and that is what I like to use, another image texture. Control the overall amount with a color ramp and adjust the scale until it looks believable. This works great for dirt and moss, but also for brighter colors like sand and dust. Speaking of sand and dust, if you want to be really fancy, you can copy the shader of your ground and mix it into the shader of your object using a mix shader node. And if you control the mix factor with a gradient texture that is controlled by an empty, you can blend in your mesh in almost any environment. These tricks might not be forbidden secrets or anything special, but in my experience, following these four steps almost always leads to great results. If you know even more secret or not so secret tricks to get realistic textures, feel free to share them for all of us in the comments down below. Until then, you might want to check out this video next.